Hello there. This is Being God's Obedient Servant channel. Uh, today's study, we're going to be doing uh, Deuteronomy's chapter 27 and 28. If you're new to this channel or just clicked on it, uh, this is a Bible study channel. I do a Bible study through the King James Version. And it's, uh, well, a lot of, you know, I know a lot of people don't really read the King James Version anymore, but that's the version that built America when the people of America followed God and God blessed this land. And so I know God approves of this version, so that's the reason why I still like to read of it. But anyways, this is going to be a little bit of a long read today because, uh, I mean, chapter 28 is kind of a long one. There's a little bit to go through on this today, so but as I was saying, if you're new to this channel, you know, you're more than welcome to hear this. This is gonna be a good study. But I do highly recommend going back, you know, through my channel and starting off in Genesis chapter one and getting called up. And that way it's like uh well it's kinda of like in any book or any story, <clears throat> if you come in the middle of something you miss a lot you know, stuff that you really need to know beforehand, so, but yeah, so, go ahead, jump right on in here, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on in here today that, now, also, if you're new to this channel, I go through the Bible, especially, like, here in the Old Testament, which parts pertain to us today, and which parts don't, there's gonna be quite a bit of this that actually pertains to us still today, and uh, people need to kind of hear this because these teachings are being lost. Most of the stuff, you know, I don't really, I've never really heard in churches and stuff growing up. And this is why I have a real problem with a lot of churches in America today. You know, even though me going to church as a child helped me learn of God and brought me to God, they still, they're not really doing their jobs anymore that they're supposed to do. But, anyways, let's go ahead and jump right on in this. Let's say we've got quite a bit to read today. So, uh, 27 verse 1. And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Now, I will say, you know, God God and Jesus both still calls us to obey God's commandments. And also we have to obey Jesus' commandments. And now some of this is the law, which doesn't pertain to us today, because it's for the Israelites specifically, but some of this still does. So let's continue on here, verse 2. And it shall be on the day that when ye pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. Now, of course, plaster is like plaster for us today. You know, we plaster the walls. You know, we use plaster for this, that, and the other. So this stuff's been around. Stuff like this has been around for a very long time. Verse 3. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over that thou mayest go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee a land that floweth with milk and honey as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Therefore it should be when ye be gone over Jordan that ye shall set up these stones which I command you this day in Mount Ebal and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt, burnt, and shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings, and shalt eat there, and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Now, <clears throat> I will kind of pause there for a second about the part being very plainly. This is to pertain to everybody today. 
it's kind of how you know here in America we have Congress and most you know Capitol Hill, the federal government and even state governments they keep writing stuff that's very confusing to us, and God condemns that because it's not written plainly. Because there's no, been so many times I've tried to read through some of the stuff and some of the laws that are coming in today, especially like how the corrupt ones doing these 5,000, 7,000 pages of stuff. It's all meant to confuse and manipulate. And God's against that. He condemns that. But if you are a person that's ever in a leadership position, you are to remember that your orders or Anything that you do with especially people beneath you or even your family is to be done plainly. That way there's no deception or manipulation. Um, so, Continue on here, verse 9. And Moses and the priest, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. And Moses is charged uh, I'm sorry, and Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount uh, Gerizim to bless the people when ye are come over Jordan. Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice. Now, if you didn't catch the other part about the one mountain, the other mountain being a, you know, a blessing, and the other curse is, you know, these are the 12 tribes of Israel. But, so, continue on here. Uh, did I read 14? Anyways, let's continue. And the Levites shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and put it in a secret place, and all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Now, this commandment still is with us today because we are still under the Ten Commandments. And this is in one, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And like I've said before, you're uh, having a God before Almighty God can be anything you put before him. But if you're a person that actually has a graven molten image, you know, that's, you have the sin, then you have abominations, which is a greater sin. And so, but we have a lot of people today, they put their job before God, they put money before God, they put friends, people, uh, cars, sporting events, all sorts of things they put before God, which become their God. You can see that today, how, you know, you got a lot of people, they're more worried about their fantasy football league than they are following God. And you have women following feminism and, you know, usurping authority. It's called usurping authority. God can commands women not to do this to men, but women do it all the time following feminism, which is also a sin. Because feminism tells women to do opposite of what God tells women to do. But women come to do this to protect themselves because the men, especially with the men of America anyways, coming up, they started getting into drugs and alcohol, especially alcohol, to the point that they banned it during the Prohibition time because it was destroying the men because they, were, they cared more about getting drunk than they did being good husbands and fathers. And then they become abusive and, you know, angry drunks and everything else. And this is how feminism came to be because of men being abusive to their wives. And women says no more. And so they got all this other stuff done and they started following this because they didn't, wasn't receiving safety from their men. But, I mean, it's, it had to have been a really horrible problem 
to have prohibition and stuff, so many men had to be jumping on board with this, getting drunk and becoming alcoholics, for them to pass a law banning alcohol for quite some time. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people had to be involved with that for it to be a bad enough to, hey, okay, we're going to ban it, you know. But it shows people have been weak in America for a very long time. America became a blessed nation and people became weak. And then, you know, to them, a hard life was not making as much money as their neighbor than they doing keeping up with the Joneses crap. You know, I got to have a car better than them. I got to have a house better than them. I got to have stuff better than them. I got to impress them. And everybody started forgetting to impress God. And when the men failed the women, the women started failing as well, following feminism. So now we have an entire country falling away from God and God's turned his back on this country. You're going to be coming into some of these curses that's going to happen when people do this to do the things that's going on in the world today. But that's going to be in chapter you know, 28 coming up, but still. Well, you'll see. Uh, but yeah, we got uh, here verse 16. Let's go ahead and j jump back into this reading. Got quite a bit to read. So. Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say amen. Now, setteth light means to dishonor. Um, you know, to, to speak ill of. It's, but yeah, I fell into the same boat because my parents didn't do right by me. Many kids today, growing up, their parents ain't doing right by them. Because in Timothy, it says, uh, you know, it tells, uh, children, honor thy father and their mother. But also says, fathers, do not bring your children to wrath, for you'll cause them to be discouraged. I fell into that, and many other people have fallen into that. Especially feminism. You know, the children are being taken away from the fathers. That's one of the curses for an ungodly nation. Or people, you know, following, you know, not following God anymore. It's, you know, the children be taken from the fathers. And the fathers will be found wanting. And in misery from it. You know, as I said, there's a lot of stuff that's coming up there that is going to open your eyes like, oh my goodness gracious, you know, America is being cursed by God right now because of all the laziness and wickedness that's been going on, the sexual revolution, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. This stuff's been going on for a very long time. Ever since the dawn of the industrial age, we've been going away from God saying, we don't need you no more. We got this on our own. We're too powerful to fail, blah, blah, blah. But here we are failing anyways. This coming up. But anyways, let's continue on. Uh, now, the beauty thing is... A lot of these, we can be forgiven these curses and the curses be taken away if we repent, which means stop doing the sin and turn back towards the Lord and his commandments and his ways. So that's the beauty of being under grace today. Um, but yeah. Continue on here, verse 17. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark and all the people shall say amen. A lot of these will be self-explanatory. Uh, Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say amen. That's got to be a very cruel person, person right there to, you know, to mess with people with disabilities. I mean, in America, we even have a law now that if you, if you attack somebody with a disability, it's actually a felony. A federal felony. You have state felonies, you have federal felonies. But, yeah. But yeah, you're a really bad person for messing with, especially with somebody that's blind. They got a hard enough life as it is. Verse 19. Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say amen. So pretty self-explanatory um we have this going on today 
we have from the 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 insurrection crap from January 6th, we have the Democrats bringing, they perverted the judgment upon people they're charging with trespassing, giving them more of a sentencing than Antifa and BLM and all this other stuff that destroyed cities, destroyed buildings and killed people. I mean, there, a lot of them is not even being charged or judged anything. And... You know, we have judges going along with this, district attorneys going along with this, we got police officers going along with this, FBI, NSA, CIA, you know, got all these agencies and stuff that's supposed to be for the people and underneath the people, which is all of us are underneath the Constitution, and they're all violating their constitutional oaths and everything else. They are perverting the judgment of the stranger. Now, stranger could be somebody strange in your land or somebody that's just, you don't know them. But, you know, the good old boy system, we talked about this before. I live, I grew up in the South. This is the big time problem, the good old boy system. You know, if if you know the right people, you don't get in trouble. Uh, if you have enough money, you don't get in trouble. You, you don't get judged the same as someone else. And it's like, you know, women... In America today, they can lie in court and don't even get charged with it. They can bring false allegation upon a man. And God says that if you do false allegations upon somebody, whatever that person's supposed to be judged with or sentenced to, the person making a false allegation is supposed to receive that judgment, it's supposed to receive that punishment. But women all across America today, they, are, don't, they don't receive as harsh of a prison sentence for committing the same crimes as the men do. We have a perverted judgment system today. It's 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 falling apart because we you know it's supposed to be uh, um, Lady Liberty is supposed to be blind. Ain't supposed to know uh, gender, race, size, um, social status. None of that stuff. It's supposed to be blind and do just by the law, and that hasn't been done good, but well before most of us have even been born. It's been going on for a very long time very long time and God gives us plenty of time to repent and stop doing these things because these people that done this stuff in the past and continued on doing it and teaching people after them to do the same thing you know it's just going to it's going to just avalanche down you know so the landslide down however you want to say it it's just going to get harder and harder as it rolls downhill because it's going to start affecting the offspring and the offspring's offspring you know as a curse some of these curses goes it'll it'll curse your children and your children's children and your children's children's children and some of us can even go down to the 10th generation and it's like you know people don't obey god's word no more they don't read it they don't care about it because they they've got other gods so you have to be very careful. Like I said before, some of the things you do in life, you know, it's going to affect someone else after you. Some of these sins that you do and everything else, they're going to affect a whole lot more other people and innocent people. You know, it does say, um, well, Let's continue on here. I thought I can be on this part for quite some time. <laughs> I still try to keep these uh, new videos and stuff uh, at least uh, try to get it 45 minutes under an hour between there. So anyways, continue on here. Verse 20. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife because he uncovered his father's skirt and all the people shall say amen. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast and all the people shall say amen. Now these are still apply to us today. These are curses for committing these sins. And I said now we're given more of a chance and more of a lead way to be forgiven because we're under grace. We're not under the law because the law was immediate punishment. And now we're under grace so we have we have more time. But like, you know, most of the time we have till 
till your death. As long as you repent before you die, you can still be forgiven and saved. But also, with some of these sins, you have to admit that you sinned, admit that you lied, admit that you've done wrong. You have to try to reconcile these things. Um, that's admitting to everybody that what you've done. This is why I feel so sorry for a lot of these politicians like that judge, Ruth Gatterberg chick, you know, whatever, you know, that, that lady there, you know, she helped keep abortions legal. I don't think she had any inclination how, you know, she decided to follow science instead of God. And, I mean, the punishment she's going to receive for that because she is responsible. She's part of the people responsible for the murder of millions of innocent babies. Uh, so, uh, as the Bible says, you're guilty of every sin you do and every sin you help create. It's like, you know, the Bible says uh, the the child will not have to answer for the sins of the father. But in many areas, the father can answer for the sins of the son. It falls under that same part. Do not bring your children to wrath for you'll cause them to be discouraged. Don't abuse them. Don't treat them wrong. Don't neglect them. You know, this falls to, uh, since mothers are trying to take the place of the fathers, it falls to them as well. Whoever puts themselves over the children, this rule applies to you. There's a lot of, win oh gosh, it's, 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 yeah. Think about all the stuff going on today with feminism taking the fathers out of the homes and then the mothers not raising the children right, using them as pawns and their hatred towards their husbands, trying to take the house, take the money, child support, take the car, take this, take retirement, take, 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 take. And this comes up in chapter 28. Some, you know, some of these curses, they're in there of these exact things. And they're happening today in this country because this country turned its back upon God. And not just turns back upon God, I mean, started doing severe wickedness. It's, uh, yeah, continue on here, verse 22. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. Of course, that also means half-sisters. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly. And all the people shall say, Amen. It says that part of it says you do something no one even knows you've done it. For you to be forgiven that sin, you got to, you know, you got to re you re reveal that secret. You, you have... If you want God to forgive you, you also have to ask the, the neighbor, the person you've done wrong, if you can be forgiven. Now, they may not forgive you, but at least if you try to reconcile it, God will forgive you it more, you know, forgive you of that. It says you, you are to reconcile anything you've done wrong to people if you can. Because, I mean, there's some people we've done wrong before in the past, and we have no clue where they're at, how to get up with them, or anything like that. God understands that stuff. But... You know. Anyways, cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people, all the people shall say Amen. That falls. This right here falls under that. You know, the man being slain in the courtroom in family court, the wife taking the children, this, that, and the other, and she's getting reward. You know, alimony, child support, blah blah blah, and all because she cheated on him or she only married him for his money and then she planned on doing this stuff and you know yeah Got a lot of uh yeah yeah they're going to be answering to god and the lake of fire will be their future if they don't fix this verse 26 cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them and all the people shall say amen. Now, of course, this part right here doesn't fall under this because this was a, this part right here is specifically for the Israelites because it's the law. 
Jesus came to finish the law. We are still under commandments and under the rules, but we're not under the Israelite law. Chapter 28. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, think about America's past. They, the people of America, the majority of them, followed God, kept his commandments, and did everything they could to do. I mean, even the women back then, they, they wore the bonnets, this, that, and the other. They adorned the head covering. This is a commandment. This is the New Testament. You know, women are to adorn a head covering. All women today are still under this, you know, women being like the Amish, pretty much. They should be dressed something like the Amish girls, Amish women. But, you know, this you know, America today is falling away, falling so far away from God. It's, uh, yeah. But we were... We were pretty much high above all nations. Everybody looked to us. You know, we were like, you know, almost the ruler nation of the world. We had the greatest stuff. Everybody wanted the American stuff. Because, I mean, even in the New Testament, it says, you know, uh, uh, well, it says servants, but it means like employees. If you have a job and you have work to do, God commands you to do your work as if you're doing it for the Lord, not for men. Now, you are to do these things regardless of how you're treated at work. I mean, even though God also commands the employers or the masters, says, do right by thy servants, for ye also have a master in heaven. And just because they don't do you right doesn't mean you have a right to sin. Just because they do wrong doesn't mean you get to do wrong. Two wrongs don't make a right. But, but yeah, we used to, we, we were high. But then all of a sudden we got, you know, too big for our britches. And now we have fallen so far now because now we're just consumers. We build nothing in America except a bunch of plastic junk. We just consume stuff now. This country's become so weak. It's, a, it's, it's not even a shadow of its former self. But also it's because the majority of the people walk away from God. Continue on here, verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and, over, and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be, uh, shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Now, when's the last time that actually happened when America used to actually help other countries? World War II. That's all the way back to the 40s. In the 50s, we were already failing. Rock and roll became more more and more uh, rebel countries started becoming more and more alcohol started becoming more that's when they actually put a prohibition on it uh, the prohibition was on it for in some areas for quite some time then you had the dry counties and everything else but it's yeah I mean, we didn't really win the Korean War, but we didn't lose it either. But we technically have not won anything against wickedness ever since. 
we got a standstill with the Korean War. So we still have North and South Korea, but Vietnam we lost. We had to flee for that. You know. But a lot of times the things, you know, that we were coming into was because we stuck our nose in where it didn't belong to begin with. You know, World War II, we were brought in because we were attacked by Japan, and then we also helped our allies in Europe. But, yeah, it's just, America is now pretty much a joke to the rest of the world. They look at us laughing because they beat us. They made fun of us and made fun of us until we started worrying about what they thought and quit being the Christian nation that we started off to be in. And now you got all the people saying, why ain't we like the rest of the world? Because God commands you to be depart and be ye separate of the world. And Amer the early Americans took that to heart. We have our own measurement systems. We have our own weight system. We have our own way of doing everything. We still have a constitution. We are the only uh, republic in the world as of right now. We're the only ones. We're still separate of the world, but our own government is, you know, many of our own government is trying to change that and get rid of the Constitution so we can be like everybody else and be slaves. But anyways, continue on here. Verse 8. The Lord shall command <clears throat> the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Oh, it's already been 30 minutes. I might have to just start reading through this. <laughs> so we, we got, uh, I think we got 60 something verses in this. Uh, verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the, the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. Everybody used to get from America and we gave food, we gave this, we gave help, we even gave lives in combat and everything else in defense. But now look at us, our government's borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. We're even borrowed from, you know, communist nations. Because this country got greedy. And quit following God and started keeping up with the Joneses and started worrying about materialism. Yeah, it's... As the saying goes, the... How sad it is when the mighty have fallen. We still have a chance to turn it around. We do. But it's going to start taking the people to quit following Satan and start following God. Quit worrying about having the biggest truck or the fastest car or the fanciest this or the prettiest outfits and whatever else out there. Garbage. You got to quit with the tattoos, the makeup, the fancy hairdos. All that stuff's sinful, and tattoos are a sin. The Bible commands are not allowed to mark your body. The makeup even falls into that because it's still marking the body. Even though it's temporary, it's still marking the body. I mean, I, I would see it as that because uh, in many areas, like, you know, do you really want to risk it? Why do you wear it? It's to impress other people. God said you should be happy with what he made you. You should be happy with yourself. People that cover themselves up are saying that they're ashamed of themselves. They don't like themselves. 
And women have been raised to think this way ever since they were kids. This is the parents failing the children. And now they're following under the curses. Continue on. Verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Now, I said you take that part out because it says, well, I command thee this day to observe and to do them. That falls to the Israelites. But you think about everything else and how much it applies to us today because the people don't hearken unto the Lord. Even churches don't hearken unto the commandments of God. I mean, Jesus set the rules for the church and they're not even being obeyed anymore. Women are to remain silent in the church and only converse to their husbands. I mean, you got women now thinking they could be p priests, pastors. They're trying to run the church. They're, tr they're, you know, they're trying to be deacons and bishops and everything else. They're, they're not obeying the church. They're obeying the rules of the church. And the men of the church are the ones supposed to be you know, the, the, well, the male leaders of the church, the deacons, the bishops, and the pastors are supposed to be the one letting them know when they're doing wrong. It says, you know, to keep, keep your members and your, your brothers and sisters in Christ from falling to the wayside. And they're not even doing it. They're just like, well, I guess they're going to do what they want to do. It's just between them and the Lord. It's like you're not telling them anything. You're not teaching all of this stuff that the Bible commands you to teach. It's, oh gosh, it's so sad. Oh, uh, anyways, um, whew, let's say I can be on this stuff for hours. 14, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Look at everybody that shows up for football games, NASCAR, and all this other stuff. They don't show up for God, but they show up for Stuff like that. It's, yeah. Just start thinking about it. Really, just start thinking about how much people don't really desire the church no more. They don't desire God's word. I mean, literally, I've been doing this for almost two years, and I get hardly anybody. I get no likes, really, from no one else. No one else is actually finishing these videos or hearing the word of God. They click on it here a little bit and they don't even give a like. They don't I don't know if they're even finishing them. But, you know, it's just I'm not I'm not really out here for subscribers and trying to make money off of this or anything else. This is what God put on my heart to do is to spread the word. And this is how he put it on me to do. And I'm hoping maybe before it's too late for America that it starts spreading or maybe someone else hears it and it says, Hey, I can do this. And they're more influent in, influential than me and start doing the same thing and get to more people, whatever it takes, you know, but our job as Christians is to spread the gospel. And this is part of the gospel. We are under these commandments and we can be under these curses, these punishments. And it's happening today. Let's continue on verse 15. But it, it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And here we go. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Most of our cities today are cursed. They're being led by... We call it the the liberals or progressives, these people that, you know, just they want to follow science. They don't want to follow God. And they keep thinking that they can use money and buy votes and everything else. And they're like, hey, if you vote for me, I will give you more welfare. We'll give you more food stamps. We'll give you free stuff. Vote for us. They're buying you and making event to eventually make slaves of you. And people are hook, line, and sinker. Hey, give me, give me, give me. I don't want to earn a living. I don't want to work. I don't want to earn my keep. And that's the way people are today. 
And it starts with the children not being raised up, doing chores and earning things. It's like it's just being given. Oh, gosh. Anyways, continue on. Verse 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. And look at a lot of the Democrat areas today that, you know, criminals can come in and steal from you and you can't even call the cops about it. Stores are closing their doors all over the place. Well, you get what you, you get what you vote for. And the way the Bible words it is, you are guilty of every sin you do, every sin you help create, and every sin you help every sin you support. And if you support somebody of wickedness, then you are guilty of their wickedness. So if you voted for a bad person, knowing that they're going to do bad, or trying to be oblivious, well, I didn't know they was going to be like that, when you've clearly seen how they've done things for years, you can be held guilty of the sins they do because you helped vote them in office. This is very crucial stuff, and people are not, I don't know what's going through people's minds, but yeah, it's, well. <sighs> Verse 18, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Now think about all the cursed children of today, how they disrespect the parents, but also the parents don't. They don't do right by the kids, by their children. Mm. And look at our land today. Our farmlands are pretty much gone. We're importing everything. Even most of, even most of our food. Because we got too many people here in America, they're too lazy to work in the fields. That's too hard a work for them to do. They want a machine to do everything for them. Oh, so, so, so sad. Verse 19. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. We have forsaken God as the majority of this country. We still got a lot of people. We still got millions of people still trying to live for God. But we've got hundreds of millions of people in this country. The Christians are not the majority no more. They, they're, they're falling to one of the lowest minorities of this country today. And of the world. Verse 20, uh, 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword. And with blasting and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Look at our land today, how much, you know, we, we're just consumers, but look how much people are, con people are going into massive debt, consuming stuff, stuff they don't even need. They're just trying to impress other people. That's, oh man, yeah. Verse 23, and, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. And if you don't understand that, it means above you and beneath you is going to crush you. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Look at the droughts going on through Sin City and Vegas and Southern California and all this other stuff. I mean, for most of us sitting here, hey, it's common sense. Those are deserts. You ain't supposed to be living there anyways. 
but there was enough rain coming down to help support the reservoirs to provide water for those areas. And now it's like massive fires. Um, you know, thousands and thousands of acreage of, you know, forest destroyed by fires. No rain to put stuff out, just dryness everywhere. Not every state is feeling this, but, you know, if you look at the areas that sin the most, you'll see them suffering the most. And they still ain't got their heads out their butts to understand why they're suffering. It's because they're not following the morals of God or the laws thereof. I mean, just because we're under grace doesn't mean we have a right to sin. There's a big difference. But continue on here, verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed in all the kingdoms of the earth. Now think about how we failed Afghanistan. We had the, mitre, the mightiest of equipment, the mightiest weapons, and we let people in caves and with IEDs bested us. Same thing in Iraq. I mean, we, de we, we defeated Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden. We got them, but as a, you know, the other parts, we failed. Uh, let's continue on here. Yeah. Yeah, we got to see. I mean, everything's right here in the Bible. And it's, well, everything that's going on today, I mean, it's plain and simple. It's right here. And people ain't even paying attention to it. It's, you know, these are some of the things that should be screaming from the top of their lungs trying to get this country to wake up and say, hey, it's going to get worse. And it probably will. Because God, God let his own people get cast into slavery multiple times. Let their lands be taken and let them be beaten and killed and everything else multiple times to bring his children back to him. And if God's willing to do that to the Israelites, what do you think, of, you know, what is this mere America, you know, the people of America, <laughs> who do you think you are to, it's like, you know. <laughs> Anyways, continue on, verse 26. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beast of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. Of course, these were plagues and stuff of the times. I didn't look up what emeralds were, but you can pretty much just get, uh, you can understand that these were... <clears throat> From, my, from what I've read about the other stuff, you know, it says, smite thee with the botch of Egypt. That's with the, uh, the pain of being a slave. You were worked to death. You know, back pains and joint pain. You know, well, that stuff's in here as well. Continue on verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Now, we're already getting the madness part. we got more and more people today that are suffering from mental illnesses than ever before in the history of the world. And my dog's wanting to walk around. That's a type of madness. You know, mental disorders, this, that, and the other, and just pretty much going crazy mentally. Let's continue on. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed 
and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. So a lot of stuff that I said it's going on right now. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. There's a lot of men out there today that has had homes that they had before they ever even got married. And now another man is with their wife in their house, in their on their land, and some farmers even lost their lands to their wives because the family court took it from them and gave to the woman instead because she wanted a divorce. And the man didn't have an ironclad prenuptial agreement to protect him. That's our court systems being perverted. Because, you know, I said, this stuff is going on now. We, the, but you got to remember, the men of America in the past brought this upon the rest of us. Because if the men of the past was treating the women properly, they would have never sought after feminism to protect themselves from evil men. And so now the rest of us must suffer. And now we have evil women and a lot of men trying to be good. But evil and good can never work together. We have to wait and hopefully the women start seeing their evil ways with psychofeminism and start leaving that and turning back to God. And the men need to start turning back to God. And then we can start being prosperous again in families and in marriages and everything else like that. Continue on verse 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shalt not be restored to thee. I mean, that's a lot of men. They're losing their cars. That's what an ass was, something to ride for transportation. Men losing their cars, their houses, their land, their children. Then they lose their paychecks. They get alimony, child support, and then even their retirements. Even their pensions and stuff. Now, are the men today the reason why these things happen? It started with the men of yesterday. But it says, once you do something then, it can affect others beneath you. These are God's warnings. Continue on. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. We've had men in America commit suicide. Not just America now, it's just this feminism stuff is destroying the world when it comes to this. We have men that are losing their children and stuff, and it's weighing on their hearts so heavily that they've committed suicide because they mourn the loss of their children and ain't that their children pass away. It's just when they're taken away from you like that. And then the courts don't, you know, whatever. Just uh, the, He's completely removed out of the picture. It's like they've died. And then what's even worse is the feminist women will turn the children against the father with lies and deceit, saying how evil he was, this, that, and the other, trying to justify her actions of sinfulness. So now you have women and children coming after these so-called feminist single mothers. And it's just, and then they're turning on their own mothers. And you got, you know, mothers being beaten to death by their own sons because, well, let's set the yeah, You can see it all in the headlines and stuff that's going on today. Isn't it? Continue on. Verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt on, be only oppressed and crushed always. 
so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Look at how many people today are being worked and worked and worked until their bodies are broken and then it can't be fixed. Your skeletal system can't be fixed. They can fix broken bones, this, that, and the other, but the cartilage, the joints, and everything else, some things they're able to do, but you're never going to be 100% again. Even with hip replacements and knee replacements, you feel better, but you'll never be 100% ever again. And then those parts will go bad and <laughs> got to have that surgery done again. If you qualify, if the insurance, if, if the insurance says that you qualify to have it done again, <laughs> because you, you might still be young enough, but it's, yeah. If you're too old and it says, ah, eh, you're not going to be live much longer anyway. So just live in pain till you die. That's literally what they pretty much tell you. They worship money. They don't worship God or doing the right thing. Oh, yeah, sadness. Verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. See, we are financing a communist nation that wants to take over us, China. And that's, you know, and plus Russia still hates us too. You know, communism always hated, you know, the free America's freedom and the Constitution and being a republic. And they are steadily doing all they can to destroy it all. And we better start following God and following the Constitution and doing what's right. Or we're just, it's all going to be gone. And our, and our offspring and stuff's going to be suffering even more. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, <laughs> whether the Lord shall lead thee. It's so like even now, most of uh, Europe and everything else, they make fun of us. After all the soldiers that's died for them so they can remain free from Nazi Germany and everything else, now they're making fun of us. They talk crap about us. We don't mean nothing to them. We're an embarrassment. Yeah. Verse 38. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shalt gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. That's kind of what they're in today, being consumed by feminism. But, you know... If that ain't the if that ain't the worst of it, then you got the city, the state coming out, you know, the protective agency saying, "Oh well, we think you're not doing right by your kids, so we're going to take them from you." Our own government does that to some people, and it's unjust how they do it. Verse forty-two: All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locust consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Yeah, America is just nothing. China is far greater than America today, especially since they're making everything for the whole world by using their slave labor. And our greedy corporations in America are just eating it up. It's well, and our government even even our government even supports it for the majority because it's we're still letting it go on. Verse forty four, 
He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. That's where we're at today with China. They're lending to us, but we're not lending to them. But everything we buy comes from them, so I guess we're kind of lending to them, but we're just building them up while making ourselves smaller. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkens not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Now, as I said, most of the stuff right here all pertains to us today. Especially that part right there. <clears throat> Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Now some parts of this was the curse that came upon the Israelites when they lost Israel and were spread out amongst the world after they killed, uh, after they murdered Jesus. Uh, Israel started being destroyed. And, but then you have the other part of the prophecy that says, uh, Israel will become a nation within a day, which did happen after World War II. So, a lot of this stuff fell upon Israel already. As I said, God's willing to do, going to do this to his own people. We don't stand a chance. Verse 47, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. That's another thing we're commanded to do. We're not just commanded to obey God. We're supposed to see the joy in following him because his ways are above our ways. But you got a lot of people now thinking, oh, I got to do this because God says so. They think of it as a punishment. God doesn't honor that. I mean, he will honor the obedience part of it, but... When you serve the Lord, you're supposed to want to joyfully serve him because you want you start, you know, you understand his ways are above our ways. He knows better than us. He's far wiser than we will ever be. And if we don't enjoy serving the Lord and want to please him, do you really have a relationship with him? Not really. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Well, that sounds, you know, kind of <laughs> kind of one of our worries here in America with China. Yeah, it's going to be it's already over an hour. Let's continue reading here. A nation of fierce continents which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. Our own nation has done that right now. Our own government wants the old to die so they can't collect Social Security and they're killing the young while still in the womb. Our own government is against our own people because the people, that's another thing, it just clicked in my head. Our pe the people of America are following money and other gods so much that they keep electing horrible leaders that are bringing a lot of this punishment upon us by themselves. And it's because we're voting for it. Not everybody, but it's happening. So it's the, it's you know that means the majority is doing this. We got to get God's word back out there, and we got to start raising our kids in God's word. So I mean, we got to teach them to be better than us. I never got to have a family, got to have children or anything like that. So. For anyone else out there hearing this and also follow, you know, reading the Bible, wanting to follow God's word, and you got children, you know, teach this stuff to them as well. And hopefully we can turn things around. Maybe, maybe not. Verse 51. 
And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind or flocks of thy sheep until he have destroyed thee. Now think about how high on the hog our government gets to live above the people. They get to eat healthy meats and healthy vegetables. We're left with canned stuff and processed stuff because we vote for it. Sad. It's very sad when you start thinking about it all. 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down, wherein thou tr trust trustest throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Think about how many people lost their farms and their land because of property taxes. Because of the government's, the government personnel they've elected into office that has done this stuff, which has cursed the land and cursed the people, and it's now, you know, They've taken your gates, they've taken your walls, they've taken your homes and your land, forcing you to you know to live elsewhere. Families have lost the inheritance that's supposed to be handed down to generations and generations because of property taxes. And so if it wasn't taken away, most people start selling it off piece by piece and stuff to try to buy fancy trucks and fancy this and everything else to impress other people. And instead of you know, working it and working the land and whatever. Yeah, you get the idea. Continue on here, 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee. Imagine that being turned into cannibals and eating your own children after they have died because you serve other gods, false gods. You serve money and Satan. And then, like I said, God says this punishment's coming to those who don't obey. Who don't keep the commandments, especially lands that he blessed initially. As the Bible says, the Lord giveth and the Lord will taketh away. 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Think about how the stories used to hear about the men walking out from their families and stuff and moving away and just leaving the woman alone. This is how all the alimony stuff started coming to be. This stuff's been going on since the 20s, the 1920s. Women could get a divorce from men and get alimony. And child support even then. Yeah. So we can thank the men of the past of this country for, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure it wasn't just all of them because it takes two to tango. So the men walk away from God and so didn't the women. Right, let's continue on here. 55. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat because he hath nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. There's your feminism right there. The delicate woman's been turned into wickedness. These things are coming true today. Especially that one. 
57. And toward her young, one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues and of long con continuance and sore sickness and of long co uh, continuance. Now, pay attention to the part. The plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed. So if, when the people of the past in America started falling away from God, serving Satan, serving money, and serving this, and pleasures, and the sexual revolution happened, and sex, drugs, rock and roll, and all this other stuff. All this stuff has been passed on to us now, so now us people that had nothing to do with then are still going to suffer, and we are. Now, most of us still have a home to sleep in of some sort. Some don't. A lot does. We have food to eat. It ain't the best food. It's kind of whatever. It's still food. But look how lonely people are today. And look how the children are coming up. They're following more and more into sin voting even worse and worse politicians in that's going to just eventually annihilate the Constitution. We're going to no longer be a republic, and they're going to end under a dictatorship and probably under the control of China. And then they're going to come here and start using our land to grow food because why? He, they polluted their own land to where it's useless. Also, they can get power and take other lands. It's scarce to say, but continue on here. Still got a little bit to read, and <laughs> yeah, I got, I got a. Well, as I said this is these are teachings. This is uh, the things I just want to explain how things can affect us today, what parts apply to us today, and everything. And I said like a lot of this stuff, we're seeing it happening now, and we will look at the history of America. And what all has happened, some people say, oh, those are the great times. No, they weren't because of what the people did. They may have lived good then, but look how much it has fallen on us now. We can't even get a decent job making decent wages. It's men and women aren't working together no more. Husband and wives, there is no husband and wives. They got children being born out of wedlock. You know, they're pretty much being raised by the streets. Oh, gosh, I said it's, we got to start doing better. We got to start doing better. Anyways, verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land whether thou goest to possess it. That has happened to the Israelites. They lost their land. They were spread across the world. And God made sure it happened because the nation quit following God. He did give it back because it was in the prophecy to do so, but... 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from 
the one end of the earth unto the other, and there shalt, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood or stone, and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Imagine how, you know, think about how many nations the Jews have been persecuted in. Even in America, in a lot of areas, they've persecuted the Jews. And they're trying to start it back up again. No, oh, man. Actually, no, it never really was here in America, Jews being persecuted. But in many other nations, especially Nazi Germany. But now they're starting to be here because why? America's starting to follow the rest of the world. And when you follow Satan, you hate godliness. And the people, that's how they are today. They're following Satan so much, they're hating anything godly. They're even persecuting Christians. Trying to get destroyed churches and everything else. Uh, 65. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, and at even, well, evening time, that's, that's what even means here is an evening, and at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Now, if that's a little confusing, it's pretty much, you know, when the sun comes up, the people will pray for it to become night. And when the night comes, they'll pray for it to become day. They just want the days to go by and barely surviving it, this, that, and the other. They're just, yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I, sp I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And it's the end of this lesson here. Almost an hour, 20 minutes. i got to stop this one. Yeah. Well, I went over a lot of stuff, and you know, as I said, there's parts of the stuff where I could just keep on and keep on and keep on. And there's just so much stuff where it's like, you know, how did we get to where we're at today? Always look at your past. And not just your past, the past of the people before you. So how do we get to where we're at today? And the desolation and everything else and our families falling apart. And Well, as I said, it's just the past of this country. You can easily see in our history... Sorry about that. My dog just decided to <laughs> go a little crazy there. Uh, neighbors come home. But, yeah. I said, okay. You can easily see in our past where our country was following God. And then you had the uh, Industrial Revolution start hitting. And everything started changing from then. Instead of working farms and fields and having families, it all became about having a job. Working for the man and this, that, and the other, and then having the stress from that, and then living in the cities and stuff. So, yeah, this country got lost, got sidetracked big time. And the property taxes started coming in, and people started losing their farms that was left. And well, yeah. And here we are today. Like I said maybe we can turn around, maybe not. Only thing you can do is do the best you can do, and that's the only thing I can do. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end this lesson here. So, uh, pray for each other, pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for this world, pray for our governments. 
pray for peace. Pray for godliness. So until next time, God bless, good night, and goodbye.